Now that you have added a model to the Web API project and added the AppDB context file, configured the AppDB context to use SQL Server, it is time to create the database and use the Entity Framework Core to create the book table. To create or modify tables, properties, or relations, in ASP.NET Core Web API project, you can use the Entity Framework Core migrations. The migrations feature in Entity Framework Core provides a way to incrementally update the database schema to keep it in sync with the application's data model while preserving the existing data in the database. To work with the Entity Framework Core migrations, you need to install the Entity Framework Core.tools package. So for that, let's go to Visual Studio and see it in action. In here, go to Tools, then Nougat Package Manager and the Package Manager Console. Now, let us just install the package. For that, I'll just type install dash package, then Microsoft.EntityFrameworkCore.Tools, and then press Enter. So we installed the package. Now let us go and create a database. For that, I'll just go to Server Explorer. Then in here, right click on the data connections and then select the create new SQL server database option. On the server name, I'll just type etr then slash SQL server. Then down here, I'll just provide a database name. I'll name my database my dash books dash db and then click the OK button. Now that the database is created, I can just expand the database and see in here that I don't have any tables or any views. So I'll just right click, then go to properties, then copy the connection string value. So I'll just control A to select, then control C to copy. Now go to the app settings.json file and then replace the fake DB connection with the real database connection string. So paste it in here and save the changes. Now it is time for us to add the migrations. So go to the package manager console and then in here add migration. You need to provide a migration name. So let us say initial database migration and then press enter. So we can see in here that the migrations command worked fine because it created a C sharp class with the name initial database migration, which was the migration name that we provided down here. We can see that it inherits from the base class migration and down here it defines the books table. So it will create a new table named books. Then it defines all the columns. Like for example, for ID, it will create a column of type integer is not nullable and it sets it as the SQL server identity. So it also sets it as the primary key for this table. And that is by default. So when you have, let's say a table book and then you define the ID to be just integer ID or book ID, in both cases, the migrations will set that property as the identifier. The next we have, for example, the date red. We can see it's of type date time and nullable true. If you go to the solution explorer, you'll see that Entity Framework Core has created a migrations folder and inside here you can see the migration. So this is the first migration that we created. And in here you have the snapshot. So it's 2021, 01, 27, 1953, 07. And that is just time in UTC. This file is added to the migrations folder when the first migration is created and it gets updated with other migrations. This file enables the entity framework core to calculate the changes that are required to bring the database up to date with the model. Now we have created the migration, but for us 
to push the changes to the database, we need to run another command. So for that, I'll just type in here update dash database and then press enter. Now that this command ran successfully, let us go to the server explorer. Then in here, let us refresh the database. And inside the tables folder, you'll now see two tables, the books table and the entity framework history. Now, if you right click on books and then show table data, you'll see that our table has all the properties that we have defined in our model.